I couldn't do an Ezio documentary without speaking to the man himself. So without further ado, let me introduce Mr. Roger Craig Smith. Hello, or should I say salute, salute. <laughs> there it is. Hey. Yes. That's the only thing I wanted to do really for this. So thanks, Roger. Cheers, Ezio. everyone. Good night. See you later. <laughs> Take care. Thanks. Thanks for having me on. <laughs> just, just, Bye-bye now. Just wanted to meet you. Um, <laughs> how are you, sir? I'm doing very well, thank you. Yourself? Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm doing well. I'm looking forward to uh, the release of the Ezio collection coming on the 18th, at least here in the UK. Um, As am I. As am I. Who'd have thought, man? The guy's got legs. You know, the character's got, uh, it's got legs. That's a wonderful thing about um, Ezio. When you think about your involvement in the game and the character itself, um, what does Ezio uh, sort of mean to you as an actor? Uh, you know what? Just I have such fond memories of everything that had happened at that time um, with with even just doing this game. I think I can remember my agent at the time that was saying, "Oh, we don't really know what's going to happen with this game series." It you know it it came out and it did okay, but there were some complaints about you know some of them uh, the fight mechanics and the repetitive nature of a lot of the missions and all that. And they said so they they're not really sure how it's going to be received. And it's also been something like I think it was three years almost between. Uh, between the original Assassin's Creed and AC2. Um, so they were saying it was it was a long period of time. I could be wrong on that figure, figure, but I think they were saying they took a long time, really worked the game, got it right. Um, and then all of a sudden I was, you know, introduced to, to Patrice Desilets and uh, Corey May, the writer, and, and just a, a team of really cool people that, that were very passionate about this project. And I didn't know what I was doing. I was just trying to, you know, do the best I could for for our director Amanda Wyatt on the series, and um, and making sure that everybody on that side of the glass was was happy with the performance. And the fact that it came out and was 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 received so well by the fan base was uh, was incredible. And so, from an actor's perspective, there's, you know, I, I have been so unbelievably fortunate in my career to 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 get to play such awesome characters, and as you, of course, is no exception. And, and uh, one of the uh, one of the ones of which I'm like most proud, especially the work that we did in AC2 of just sort of establishing a new character that nobody really knew before, and uh, and and getting to 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 hammer out something that that kind of resonated with the audience uh, is really really cool. And I get I get really nice things said all the time uh, on Twitter and whatnot from from fans that reach out and just say, "Oh man, this game, you know, meant so much to me at a time in my life and all that." So it, it's really neat. It's, it, what what a gift. You know, I, I like the I like the work as an actor. I like to get the gig, but when it uh, when it affects people in a positive way, it's always always just a really really cool cool thing to get to to be on the receiving end of as an actor. What was your uh, knowledge of the series before you jumped on? Uh, pretty limited. Um, I mean, I remember it, like firing it up and playing it once, um, uh, and then asking a friend of mine like what he thought about it. And, and it was funny because he basically resonated a lot of things. And he's like, it's a gorgeous game. It's really cool. Love the concept. And he said, but it just kind of started getting sort of repetitive. And he said, and after a while, the fights were kind of boring because it was just sort of like the same kind of thing over and over and over again. Um, and I didn't really I didn't really play too much of it. At the time, I wasn't really all that interested in like narrative-based games um, when, the, when that first uh, AC had come out. I was more just like, nah, let me just, you know, let me sit down for a couple hours and blow a bunch of stuff up. Hmm. and, you know, laugh about it and move on kind of thing. Um, so I, I really didn't have a, a, a lot of experience with it. And and really and truly, I on almost every project, unless someone tells me specifically that they want me to go back and actually understand, you know, a tremendous amount of what's, you know, what's already been established, I like to approach things. Um, I used to prepare a lot for, for, for work. And what I've found is sometimes you go in and you can do a, a ton of preparation so much of it is like speculative. You're just kind of going, like, I don't know. You're, you, you, I just, th- I guess this is what they, uh, that what they want. You know, uh, so mm-hmm. I'll make these choices and, and prepare for that. Then you get in the room and they go, Oh no, 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 no. We're, we're taking the game or you know this character or whatever it is in a completely different direction and it's going to be skewed like this. And you go, Oh well, all those choices are out the window and now we go with something new. So uh, I think I just kind of went into it going, Look, I'm, I'm going to por- portray this character. I, I try to dumb it down and go, I'm just going to do this thing. And uh, and trust, you know, that the director is going to, you know, point me in the right direction and that the, you know, the, the writer and that the creative director and everybody's happy with what it is that I'm providing. And as long as they're signing off on it, then I know I'm, I'm doing what's right and trying to worry about, you know, the preparation for a ton of, ton of other stuff um, doesn't necessarily benefit me. The only thing that really with Ezio that I was really concerned about and working on was just how we were going to approach the accent. Um, 
and uh, and and so I listened to a lot of different you know um, people that the, the Italians that could speak English mm-hmm. speaking in English, um, but even then trying not to emulate uh, what they were doing too exactly just because I knew we were going to be sort of painting a different uh, different picture with this character given the the time place uh, the the time and the place and all that stuff it was. Yeah, I knew we were going to sort of fudge some things a little bit, so it was kind of like a Spalia tangling ish <laughs> <laughs> And that's the one uh, thing that a lot of people take away, I think, from uh, from Ezio is the um, the accent that you used, and um, and how none of us knew that it was that it was you that was portraying him, which I guess is a compliment, I suppose. Is it? I, I'd I like know. to think so. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'd like to think so because because I, I, I and I know for a fact too. I'm sure there's a lot of Italians out there that just hear my accent and go, "Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's so bad." Um, but it was, you know, and, and I worked very closely on, especially on AC2, um, Ida Darvish, uh, Darvish at the time, um, she uh, she was my dialect coach and, mm-hmm. uh, and and worked very closely with her. Um, and, and I mean, it's funny whenever I see like cutscenes from AC2 and then all of a sudden there's Ezio speaking Italian and I just crack up going, <laughs> so much of it was like, I don't know what I'm saying exactly. I can understand the where, where to put the inflection and, and trust in Ida. To, to guide me through this stuff, but it, a lot of it was just sort of having Ida sort of parrot to me. Well, I would parrot back. She would say to me the the line in Italian, and then I would try to parrot it back, um, matching the you know what she was um, saying, and then we would sort of finesse the performance from there. And if Ida gave the thumbs up to uh, Amanda, the director, then we knew that you know as long as Amanda was happy with the performance and Ida was happy with the accent and and the words, um, then then you know then we were doing it correct. So it was. Uh, it, it was neat getting to work with with Ida on that, and 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 I can't throw her under the bus because she has a flawless accent. But <laughs> we did, I think, work on it and, and understand that since it was going to be a game primarily for a Western audience, um, that if we if we hammered the accent a little too hard, it might kind of seem sort of out of place. So they we really did kind of like like kind of like fudge some areas where it was almost like a Spanish accent mixed in with uh, Italian, um, regardless of the fact that you know he's full blooded Italian. Mm. Well, I do love the voice. I do try and emulate it every now and then as I'm walking around in my daily life. Um, yeah, it's funny. I mean, for a guy with you know with the name Ross or a guy with the name Roger trying to do the accent, like you know when people see you do it, is uh, <laughs> it's, it's an entirely different thing. Everybody was asked, they're like, "You ever like hit on chicks at a bar?" You know, doing the Ezio accent. I'm like, really? Have you seen me? (laughs) Really? Wouldn't you think that's the creepiest thing ever if you saw this guy looking like, how are you? (laughs) Like, what is wrong with you? Like, I do not know what you're talking about. It it just wouldn't, it wouldn't work very well. That was one of the questions that someone sent to me, actually. Oh, really? Do you ever try to pick up girls? Yeah, I get it all the time. Yeah, they're like, do you ever pick up women? I'm like, no, have you seen this? Like, I'm, I'm, you know, Scotch-Irish and pasty and all that stuff. It's like, it's not going to... I remember, you know, the um, PlayStation, the For Michael um, ad campaign that they had had Mm -hmm. where they brought back all these, like, iconic video game characters? They had Ezio in that. And I provided the voice for it, but at one point they actually wanted to... To, gosh, they wanted to fly me out to Prague and and shoot the the commercial out there and wow. and they were like, yeah, we want you to be be Ezio and I was like, there's not enough bronzing makeup in the world <laughs> to make to make this little Scotch Irish five foot five guy look like you know this badass that is you know Ezio Auditore. I was like, it's not gonna it's not really gonna work very well. So I think they think they hired a guy to kind of look like Ezio and then they used my voice, which was I was very happy to be a part of that. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, have you ever ordered a pizza or anything? Um, have you ever do anything over the phone that you use your vocal talents to? Uh, you know what? People off? Not, not really. Not as Ezio. Not. I mean, like, gosh, I'm trying to think. Even my girlfriend probably wouldn't want me, you know, to to speak as that because <laughs> <laughs> it's because it's just once you know me, it's just like okay, that's creepy. Um, <laughs> no, never, never, uh, never tried to do anything over the phone. Um, I should though. I mean, one of these days, I really just you know. But but ordering a pizza would be kind of funny, you know. <laughs> Especially like what kind of a guy, what kind of a full blooded Italian would call, you know, uh, like like a bad pizza delivery place. <laughs> and order, <laughs> yes, I want the one with the stuffed crust. <laughs> I want, I want hot dogs in my crust, <laughs> like, because I'm Italian. No, it, uh, yeah, like, do you have the string, the squeezy cheese in the crust? <laughs> yeah, they'd be like, why are you calling uh, <laughs> Stoner's Pizza, bro? Shouldn't you, like, make your own? I think it would be funny if Ezio just started insulting their pizza. 
Just having yeah. a right go at them about the, their lack of yeah, uh, why knowledge. Why are you putting these hot dogs? These hot dogs do not belong in a good pizza. <laughs> <laughs> you are getting it wrong. Genuine dialogue missing from Assassin's Creed Brotherhood there. Exactly. And well, I'm sure they'll, you know, someday, who knows? I mean, with the Animus, you know, he could pop into the future for all I know and then just really give it to, like, you know, to Little Caesars. You know, why all this pizza for only $5? It makes no <laughs> sense. <laughs> could not be real food. <laughs> See, now I sounded French there for a second. <laughs> it could not be real food. Was it, um, how, was it hard for you to, to kind of keep into the accent whilst recording? Because uh, Ezio has a mighty amount of dialogue in, in each of the games. Yeah, maybe not so much um, when we were doing it, but, but I always get so nervous doing it for even just like moments like this because I don't have the dialect coaches with me. You know, we had P- Peter Arpacello was my dialect coach about halfway through Brotherhood. Um, Ida went and had to go get herself knocked up and have a baby with her husband and all that. So, uh, you know, it, it, it was uh, it was it was an interesting transition because obviously everybody's going to have different approaches to how they you know treat the accent, especially when we consider we were doing something that was taking place in a historic uh, time setting. So, mm-hmm. um, but uh, but I would say like in the game, not so much because there was always a dialect coach there for me to kind of say like. You know, am I doing this right? You know, making like in doing this right. You know, just to verify things with them on the fly. And whenever I'm asked to do it, like at a convention or during a podcast interview or anything like that, I'm always a little nervous because I'm going, oh man, you know, I'm gonna. I'm, I, just, I know that I'm breaking some rules and butchering it, and <laughs> you know, uh, that kind of thing. But but no, once you're in the game, like you you spend you know four hours at a time. And I think there were a couple of days where we even did some double sessions. Um, you know, you you can spend a lot of time just. And you just stay in that realm. What are you? You keep reminding yourself, like you know, uh, that oh, that's right. I can't use the like the. It's like the the. You know, however mm-hmm. you're going to use the words, and and you just keep you know keep doing it over and over and over again, and then you're kind of locked in. Uh, but it's usually the most difficult is uh, is when I'm doing it for like you know, some fan holding up a cell phone at a convention or something like that, just asking you to do something. And you're like, I don't know if I'm gonna get all the words right. <laughs> Uh, I remember last time you were on, we were discussing um, Carl Crane from Dying Light, and um, yes, and how you spent a lot of time doing the uh, ah, uh, uh, <laughs> always. Uh. Um, yep. This I don't know if this is a stupid question or not, but is that more difficult when you're doing like Ezio's voice, doing the uh, no, it's ooh, and all that. It's super easy as Ezio because <laughs> one of the nicest things about Assassin's Creed is a they they said look if he's scaling the side of a building with windows all around, he's not going to want to make a ton of noise. So Ezio never really. He never really screamed out, uh, you know, as death pains or anything like that. There was never like a, I can't even remember if we did like, so many of these video games, they involve like, okay, now you're falling from a 50 foot cliff. Now you're falling from a 150 foot cliff. Now you're falling from a 300 foot cliff. You know, it's like now you're falling out of an airplane. So we need a nice long scream. I don't think we ever really did anything like that with Ezio. Um, Most of his deaths were very quiet. He was so capable um, as an assassin that it's like, you know, he, he didn't do a lot of, you know, grunts. I mean, I think you'll hear as he's leaping and pulling himself up, you know, on ledges of buildings and things like that, there's little bits of... Mm-hmm. But nothing like... Gah! Gah! You know, like the the zombie fighting that would be, you know, something from Dying Light yeah. um, is a little bit more extreme in terms of, you know, it wouldn't make much sense for a guy if he's trying to be all stealth-like on the side of a building to be, you know, to be... Pulling himself up and going, oh, oh this is, oh, I gotta stay, oh, I gotta stop eating those donuts. <laughs> you know, it's like it. So it made good sense to kind of keep him, uh, you know, the quiet stealth uh, assassin. So they they really didn't have a lot of like grunts and efforts with uh, with Assassin's Creed. So it was kind of a dream, a dream video game gig in that regard because it wasn't too taxing on the voice. I should have paid more attention. Really, I'm gonna go back and play them and notice that. Yeah, there you go. Well, I know I'm going to be doing that on. Uh, I think we come. I think for us on the on the U.S. it's on the 17th. No. Uh, you know, over here. Sorry. Over here, I don't know how you're going to yeah. feel about this, Roger. But on the 18th, um, not only does the Etsy collection come out, but so does your Lego Dimensions pack for <laughs> Sonic on the for same Sonic. day. Sonic! Oh my God! <laughs> I didn't even realize that. Is that happening at the same on the same day? Exactly the same day. That's hilarious. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be quite torn. <laughs> <laughs> I'll uh, I'll have to put out some fan art requests for folks to. Uh, I've already seen a couple of people that have done like you know Sonic as uh, as Ezio. It's really cool. Oh, wow. I'd rather see. I think you know that that'll be the challenge. Maybe that we'll start that on your podcast here. Uh, we'll we'll say I want to see. Um, what do I say, Louis? As Sonic as Ezio, 
I'd rather see Ezio as Sonic. Oh, wow. <laughs> and what, what freak of nature that might look like. <laughs> a blue Ezio with spiked spiked hair or something. I don't know how they would... We'll let the fans decide, but that's too funny. I didn't realize they were coming out on the same day. That's uh, not, a, not a bad day for me. I'll take that. Yeah, I've got a lot of Roger Gray Smith stuff happening that day. Really yeah, that'll, that'll work. <laughs> I didn't realize that. I gotta, I gotta stay more on top of this stuff. I don't even know what the hell I'm doing. Yeah, they get the dimension stuff normally three days later over here. So um, yeah, it just happens that they 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 both fall on the same day. Oh, how cool! That's such a fun game. And Lego Dimensions does such a great job with that stuff. It's gonna be, uh, it's going to be very fun to see the uh, the Sonic little Easter eggs and stuff they've got planned. Lego Lego does it like nobody else, man. They they make a really mm. fun game. Lego Dimensions is a is a masterpiece, and it's draining me of every single cent of my money that I own. Oh, holy cow. <laughs> I have not, I have not, this is horrible, I have not even fired up, um, I haven't fired up a gaming system in probably, oh, man, three months, four months. Like, I've not, I got busy, I started traveling a lot, doing different things, and then it was like, it just dawned on me the other day, I'm like, man, I'm going to fire up my Xbox and have about, like, you know, 60 gigs worth of <laughs> updates yeah. that are going to have to happen, and I just, I, I, it's gotten to a point where, thankfully, work has kept me busy enough to the point where I'm like, man, I, I hardly have time to play the things, you know, the way I used to. When I, when I was first starting out, I'd like, you know, if I landed a voiceover gig in a month, it was a great day, and, uh, and I would sit there and be like, man, this is cool, I'm, you know, I worked this week. I think I'll uh, I think I'll just play, you know, Halo for the rest of the week <laughs> or whatever it is. And uh and now it's like I just look at certain games and I go, "Man, I know that if I fire that thing up, I'm going to my whole house is going to fall apart. I'm going to not get any work done, laundry. I'm never going to sleep." I'm like, "This isn't good." <laughs> Are you curious about um the the Etsy collection seeing these older games now sort of remastered, um seeing the worlds you were in a bit more brighter, a bit more high definition? I am. I that's the one thing that I uh, I was I was prepping my girlfriend for uh, Christmas. I said, you know, there's a there's a strong likelihood that I am going to as part of my vacation this year um kind of fire up one of those games and uh, and play it or maybe maybe day after Thanksgiving when I know I've got a Friday off or something. I said I'll I'll uh, I might just kind of say, "Hey, you're going to see a side of me you might not recognize." <laughs> where where it's like, you know, I haven't showered, I'm in sweats, and all I'm going to do is just zone out and play this game. I I really would like to go back and see AC2. Um mm-hmm. that that one always just holds such a special pl- a special place in my heart just because of of Patrice's influence in the game at the time. Um, and the work that we were doing, it, it was neat to, you know, I, I, I've portrayed, you know, Batman, Captain America, and Sonic the Hedgehog, and these are all characters that, that have been around 75 years in the case of, you know, Batman and, and, uh, and Captain America, and 25 years for Sonic, and, and so, of course, there's been other actors that have had their chances to portray the, the character, and so you're always sort of like, they're holding a candle to you at, at times with trying to make sure that you're, you're doing their version of Sonic, or mm-hmm. their Batman, or their Captain America, that kind of thing. Um, and it was neat to be able to, and I didn't, I didn't realize what I was doing at the time. Um, I think, I think I, I, cause I try not to think too, too big picture with a lot of that stuff. Um, cause it'll freak you out if you're like, oh, this, this could be played by, you know, in the case of AC2, I think it had, gosh, I can't remember how many millions of games sold worldwide that you, you sit there for a second and think, man, that's like, that's like potentially like 9 million, 10 million people. And, and likely more that have, that have heard my voice, you know, in this character and, and you try not to wrap your brain around that so I just focused on doing what I was doing and then the game came out and did really well and uh and and it was like that was that was fascinating to be a part of something like that and we did sort of form a really nice working bond I just saw Patrice um at E3 this most uh this this uh, uh 2016 E3 right. for the first time in years and it was so great getting to talk to him and, and thank him again for being a part of all that and uh, and get a chance to kind of just go man what a, what a what a trip what a ride and and of course now I think this is just such a uh, a, 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 it really does go to show um, just how great of a series they created with the, with, especially with the character of Ezio, but just overall in general that they can re-release something like this, that they can put that kind of energy into something that you know over a three-game sort of arc um, that they could uh, that they could re-release something like this. It's it's really cool. So I'm excited to play AC2 again, uh, most especially um, just to kind of go back and go, ah, this is where it all began, and that's where we spoke the most Italian. I think they probably <laughs> figured out like having to have the dialect coach say it all before Roger can probably takes a little longer than we need to. So let's just get this game. <laughs> let's start. Let's just start having Ezio only say a few things in Italian, that kind of thing. <laughs> but you know, for for brotherhood and for revelations, we'll kind of back off some of the Italian lords. Um, but it was uh, it, it was such a neat thing. So I'm I'm excited to see it on a uh, on a nice big old 
TV and in and in ultra high def. Should be very cool. I'm very excited as well. Um, was it always going to be a trilogy? Did you know that from from AC2 that it would go nope. on to have a full story? No, and and like I say, like um, you know, I can remember my agent at the time saying like, oh, you know, and I don't know who she was talking to or anything like that, but she was saying like, not a lot of confidence, you know, not really sure what's going to happen with this thing. They don't know if it's going to last and all that. I was like, oh, all right, well, okay. I mean, I guess I'm happy to have the gig, you know, and um, and and so no, I didn't, I didn't know what was going to happen. And the fact that they called up almost immediately and were like, okay, we're going DLC, and then they're like, no, we're going full game. Uh, you know, it, it, it was it was unreal. You know, it was like it was also kind of sad when I knew I was like, ah, oh, well, they're gonna go a different direction, new protagonist and all that kind of stuff. Um, but it was, you know, for AC three. But it was like, uh, you know, I got it. I, I cannot complain to have had a chance to to portray a character. And and kudos to Ubisoft for even letting me. You know, they could have easily said like, all right, well, for his older age, let's just get an actor that sounds older naturally and not have Roger do, you know, his old version of Ezio kind of thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, but they allowed me to do it, and I thought that was really cool. And I know I know that the it's really interesting, and I, and I get it um, because I've been on the receiving end of so many complaints, um, which I never, you know, it, it, I, I fully understand. Whenever you're portraying a character that's already been done by somebody else, um, if you love these characters the way so many of us do, um, the notion that there's a company that's going to go do something different or potentially mess with your version of the character that you like, I get that it can be sort of like, you know, not frightening, but it can be... Uh, concerning that you sit there and think like, ah, what are you doing? Like, don't, don't, don't take the Sonic the Hedgehog that I grew up loving and mess with it. Mm. And to be on the side of when um, I think it was Chronicles China came out, and there was like a, a tutorial section um, that featured uh, a different. And this was because I think of some outsourced production and that kind of thing. Ubisoft said it was you know a mistake. We didn't realize what was going on. They they had some other voice actor do a really you know, and it's not to knock that individual, but it was just not not Ezio, and they had this this particular actor do their version of Ezio, and it was like the fans were were up in arms over it, which was kind of cool, and people were just saying like, what the hell is that? That's not Ezio. <laughs> so it was kind of funny to to be on the receiving end of people going, that's you know, that's not our guy. Mm. Um, it was really cool to 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 get a chance to go back in, and then Loomer um, uh, was was nice enough to to do a. Uh, to do a, a a sort of fan you know video with Ubisoft's blessing, because um, both of us had reached out and said, hey, this is something we were thinking about doing, and just you know it could be kind of a fun outreach to the fans. And we got to do a, a YouTube version of that training sequence with Ezio, very crudely done without a dialect coach, and me just recording it on my end and sending Loomer the uh, the pieces. But yeah, it's uh, I I, for, I know I'm rambling right now. I forgot what the the impetus for this uh, this rant was, but um, it's. Uh, Oh shoot! What was the question? <laughs> I um, do this all the time. I just asked you what your favorite color was. Oh, how funny! Yes. Uh, <laughs> I, well, let's see. So, color started way back when. <laughs> I'll give you the history of color, and then I'll answer that. Uh, I was just asking about the, uh, the the spawning of the two sequels after AC two, and if that was a plan before. Oh yeah, uh, the end no. of AC two. Never knew. Like I said, I I think we went into it kind kind of not knowing that it was going to turn into anything, and then being on the receiving end of having it be a, you know resonating with fans and having people really enjoy it and getting to tell all those stories from you know essentially the beginning of his life when you know in AC two you basically press the B button to be slapping the baby to wake it up, you know to 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 go from that to uh, to his death essentially in mm-hmm. in the Embers short was just really cool. So to, the fact that it went over three games, you know I've I've never been a part of anything that that did that. Um, so it was really cool to, to be on the receiving end, that, receiving end of that. That was a, uh, I was quite honored that Ubisoft allowed me to do that for you know the the entirety of his life. Us too, man. Us too. We're very uh, we all love Ezio, but you know that. Good. So. Thank you. Um, one thing that people do love about Ezio is um, his his wording, his use of uh, language, and um, there's a lot of people that have favorite lines. I've seen friends of mine have Ezio quotes tattooed on them, and you know, crazy. crazy things like, do you have any uh, any favorite lines from Ezio? I always the one that I really enjoyed the most, and I remember asking Amanda because I, I said this is this is a significant moment for me in, in in really what it was for Ezio. I mean, when he starts out, he's a punk, you know, he's like he's living a good life, and it's it's like he and his brother are running on rooftops and <laughs> and, and uh, picking up women and and having a, a a grand old time, and then that's that's essentially he's just you know he was a boy, mm-hmm. um, 
and after the murder of his family and um and when he when he basically declares to the you know to to the Templars um that uh that the auditore are not dead I'm still here me Ezio Ezio auditore that one line I always just thought was just that that, that would to me was such a neat moment to to be able to do and to be able to yell it out and and let the engineer know I'm like I'm gonna kind of go go off on this one I said because this to me is 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 a significant turning point in this young man's life where it's like he's basically saying okay I'm letting you know I'm here and uh and and you're not taking this all out and and it, that to me was the sort of transition from being you know um his father's son to being the sort of not patriarch of his family but it but but he's the one who's going to go out and avenge their deaths and and uh, and make you know m- make right mm-hmm. um all these wrongs and and I thought that was that's that's one of my favorites I mean and then of course you got to go with you know Requiescatim Pace cuz it's just like how many thousands of times has he said that um, in in his life? And uh, usually, if I'm signing something for a fan um, at a convention, I'll even put like "Insieme per la vittoria," um, which I believe is like "Together for victory" or "Onward for victory." Uh, I've seen a couple different translations of it, and I'm always kind of confused. But I believe it's "Together for victory." Um, and uh, yeah, I like I, those those three kind of always stick out to me. So. Um, did you have any knowledge of uh, Renaissance history or the Templars before joining the series? Because Assassin's Creed, I think, to an outsider, it can be a little confusing. Um, and I think um, it sort of all making sense. I think Ubisoft did a, such a great job of writing um, no it all to make it appealing to us, you know, as a new generation. Um, did you have any knowledge of like the Templars or any history of Rome or Montegrioni before jumping on? Well, like. Like a good American, no. <laughs> like, our grasp of history wasn't it Eddie Izzard that always gives us a hard time, like saying like you go to a, a, a museum in uh, in the U.S. and it's like you know, and here it is, uh, we've restored it exactly as it was over fifty years ago today, <laughs> and uh, and so no, no, I had a very limited amount of of history, and I was not at all a history buff, as I was a horrible high school student, so it was like I just you know I glossed over for a lot of that stuff. And I felt like such a like a dumbass when I was sitting there, kind of going like, "Wow, I really like that sequence that you guys wrote in for you know." I think it was Kater- uh, it was a Caterina Sforza. Um, I think this was Revelations. Might have been Brotherhood. Might have been Brotherhood or Revelations. Can't remember. Um, where she lifts her skirt up, um, you know, in defiance of the oppressors, and and I was like, "Man, that's a, that's really that's effective writing. That's really crazy." He goes. The guy, they're like, yeah, you know that it really happened, and I was like, oh, yeah, I mean, yeah, I know that, yeah, <laughs> like in history and stuff, yeah. <laughs> it's just like, oh, I'm such a dumb, an ignorant American, but no, I had a very, very limited amount of uh, uh, of knowledge on on the history of it all, um, and actually, um, uh, I had taken a, a trip to Italy, um, just I think after Brotherhood. Might have been Brotherhood, or or maybe just after after Revelations. I, I can't remember where the timeline was, but and it was fascinating. Just it, it really did go to show, and and it gave me so much of a greater appreciation for the detail and the homework that Ubisoft had put into their production. Um, seeing all these buildings and going, my gosh, they really did get it right. They, I mean, this looks just like from the game, um, because up until that point, that was you know all I've ever seen is pictures. But here I was in Italy, uh, you know, in Firenze. Um, and 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 walking around, going, oh, how crazy! Look at all the details that they put into this game, um, that that actually exist on these buildings. It, it was really cool. Um, and and then to to actually do some of the research at the time when I would look at certain things, I'd start googling to find out like, oh, what is this based on? Like, where is this from? Oh, holy cow! It's it's literally ripped from the pages of history, and they might take some liberty with it, um, but they do a really good job of of kind of intertwining that stuff. It, it's in that way, the depth of this game and this franchise offers up a lot of opportunities to kind of go not only enjoy some gameplay and uh, and 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 some beautiful visuals and all that, but also kind of under, get an, a greater understanding of of some of the things that that are at play. And there was our tour guide in Rome um, was a Roman, and uh, you know had been born and raised there his whole life, and he had a lot of things to say about the history of the city and the the church's treatment of the city, and it was. It was very funny. He uh, at, at one point through our tour, it was a private tour, and he and he turned around and he just said, uh, "Are you religious?" <laughs> and we went, uh, w- "Well, n- not necessarily." What? Why the question? And he said, "Do you get offended?" And we were like, "No." What's it? And then he just proceeded to say, he "says Okay, 
And so he told us about his experiences and all that. And I thought, oh, how fascinating, because that was a lot of sort of the thematic elements and the corruption that uh, that, that Assassin's Creed was trying to, to shed light on, not shed light on, but just sort of reflect upon saying like, this is historically mm -hmm. some of the things that were going on at that time. Um, and it was really fascinating to see all of it kind of, you know, uh, really sort of like come home when I when I was actually over in Rome and Florence and uh, uh, where, where else did we go? Um, Oh God, I can't. I'm I'm drawing a blank on the the third city. It's like one of the more popular ones. Venice, sorry. Um, and just saying, you know, this is this is so neat to see all this uh, and mm. to realize that that Ubisoft had done their homework so well. It was really cool. Please tell me you walked around Italy in a white hood. No, I thought oh. about. It. I was like, you know what I should do is just get <laughs> the one thing I did was like I would pop, prop up my uh, my my camera uh, or my phone with uh with like a picture of Etsy or something like that in front of some of the artifacts and I would just snap pictures and I think I was either facebooking or twittering at the time and just you know take you know photos like that but again no I uh but you know what's a trip is when I would see like you know um some sweatshirts or things like that you know somebody had like the assassins logo on it it's so funny um <laughs> I had one one year at Comic-Con a young man was dressed up as Ezio and and uh and uh, and I just said, you know, hey, would you mind if I took a photo with you real quick? And the guy's like, sure thing. And, you know, I put my arm over his shoulder and you know, take the photo. And then as he was walking away, I said something like, you know, thank you very much. <laughs> or something something, something to that degree. And he gets like the classic double take of like, what? <laughs> it's like, like, dude, you don't sound like Ezio at all. <laughs> like, Stop doing that. Uh, that was pretty funny. But no, I, I haven't... Uh, I've I've gotten on. I mean, I'm I'm as much a fan as anybody else. So I'll get on to like you know. Uh, I think it's the UB Shop. Is that this the, the Ubisoft store or UB store or something like that? And the, yeah, I'll get you know collectibles. And um, I missed out on the bronze Ezio bust, and I wanted that one so bad. But um, you know, the, and I know they're they're releasing some new. I think uh, figurines and stuff, and in, in in celebration of the re-release of the the trilogy. So. Uh, I, I, I do have sweatshirts that uh, that may or may not have the, the assassin's hood. I bet you do. I do. <laughs> yeah, I thought you would. You don't yeah. get these things, Ubisoft just don't send these things to you? No, it doesn't really work that way. I'm sure if I wanted to reach out and all that kind of stuff, but it, I mean, there's always an assumption that people people assume that it's like anytime something like that happens that like, you know, I mean, it, sometimes I'm flattered if I get a copy of, of a game. And, I, and not that Ubisoft was not doing that. They were They were always very generous with that, but... Um, but no, it's it's pretty common. It's like you know, I am a I am a line item in the production of a video game. So I am I am a a, a you know a a hired individual who shows up to do a job for a brief amount of time, and then I go. And um, and so just because I was a part of something, that, now granted, if you're the lead actor in a, in a series or that kind of thing, it's always nice when the game company reaches out and says, hey, we want to send this to you. Um, but but very often you you sometimes don't get that and and it does it I never I never bat an eye at it and I don't look at it and go like eh, whatever it's like you know I'll 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 hop on to, to to Amazon and get my copy of the game if I want and if uh, if they happen to send me a couple copies of the game I'll donate it to charity or you know give it to somebody it, it's it's oh. like it doesn't bother me so it's uh, it's it's all it's all good you're um, a good guy Roger Craysmith you're a good I tell you I try to be try to be <laughs> um, I think what's interesting um, is that. Ezio uh, and kind of Assassin's Creed as a whole deals with themes and tones that um, you wouldn't normally find in, say, um, Batman or Son of the Hedgehog. True. Um, was it important um, sort of for you to go in, into that more dramatic area, or was it just uh, another kind of uh, another another job to to focus on really from there? No, I especially with Ezio I think it's rare I haven't really had a lot of other jobs where they tried to approach subject matter that was that was trying to, to touch on a dramatic tone um, you know Batman is sort of uh, uh, it's in such and it's it's hard to say I mean, we're talking about you know the animus and traveling back into your brain for you know getting your ancestral memories which is a pretty far flung kind of concept but um, but but I think the Assassin's Creed world was sort of always trying to be grounded in a little bit more of like a real world setting. Now, granted, <laughs> when we're talking about the Apple of Eden, all that kind of stuff, yeah. um, it, it gets pretty fantastical. But still, the performances were a little bit more theatrical than a lot of the other stuff that I get to do. So I, I really welcomed it. I mean, there's there's been times where I've said, like, you know, I don't really I don't really get a lot of 
roles that 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 allow me to kind of you know take a bite out of something and really try to go someplace dramatically. So anytime there was that op- opportunity to to pursue that with with Ezio, I I always took it very seriously, and I was I was very appreciative that I had a chance to kind of you know kind of do some acting chops here and there. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, the, so yeah, no, I, it was important to me with the, with the dramatic element of that because I think they were trying to have you <clears throat> understand that this was you know that this was happening or at least that it's there's the 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 I guess tinge of realism to it because so many of these events were sort of like tied to you know world history um, that I you know I, I didn't want to play it too fantastical um, whereas you know with, with Batman or that kind of stuff we're talking about you know things that are a little bit more in, in, a, in a fantasy realm by comparison um, uh, and and it doesn't mean that you treat the performance with any less sort of a genuine nature but you are already more of a you know more of a fantasy based character to begin with as opposed to Ezio who was just a you know a normal kid um, you know just at a different time uh, so yeah I think the dramatic you know the dramatic elements were were very important to me important to me especially in AC2 um, you know with uh, him crying out father and you know I'll kill you for what you've done and all the the moments that were so uh, you know hor- horrific in a lot of ways and trying to get that right which is never an easy thing from just behind a VO mic because there's so much I'm I'm sort of blind to everything all I can do is is deliver a vocal performance but how they animate it and the way that it's animated and the, um, the facial expressions and all that can really affect the way the performance is perceived or received I should say and that's so far beyond my control that you know um, if, if I've got a chance to do something on a dramatic level I try to take it very seriously um, and that comes across in your performance I think absolutely cool thank you Man, it's, it's a rare rare opportunity you're not really getting to cover those types of like you were saying that that type of subject matter when when you know <laughs> it's like I don't think Sonic is going to be out there going like you know father <laughs> I'll kill you for what you've done it's just not uh, doesn't have the same sort of like <laughs> believability I guess oh that just got me really pumped for Lego Dimensions in November, actually. So thanks. Ah, for cool, good, good, good. <laughs> I, I, I can guarantee you're not going to be disappointed. Every little bit I've seen from that just looks so incredible. It's going to be such a neat game. I can't wait. I generally cannot wait. I've had it pre-ordered for months and months. I love uh, it. The Assassin's Creed series is moving into film. Yes. Um, with of course Assassin's Creed and Michael Fashbender. Yeah. Um, Fashbender. I've seen the trailer so far, and it does look, it does look hugely impressive. Um, what do you think the benefit is of crossing mediums uh, between games and movies? Do you think that um, it does look fantastic, and uh, I can't wait to see it? But is it, is it a necessary uh, thing when the the storytelling in gaming is, in, in gaming is becoming so much more prevalent now? Yeah, you know, I've always wondered. I'm like, I, I wonder when we're going to get to a point where, because they're doing so much with like the full performance capture and all that kind of stuff. And I just think, when are we going to get to the point where just all the cutscenes are just basically live action actors, you know, mm. just doing what they do? And, uh, you know, that, that, could be, that could be an interesting thing. I, I don't know that it maybe, it might actually break the fourth wall a little too much, I guess, um, or, or be too much of a jump between the fantasy world of, of gaming and then the real world action sequences. Maybe that wouldn't work, but but yeah, I, I think, um, and this is something that's happened just in the, t- the, the the brief amount of time that I've been in in voiceover as an industry is that we've we've suddenly gone to these these extensive narrative based games that really are sort of long form movies that you are that are an interactive experience. Um, so it, it's, you know, the, the passive experience of watching a film is interesting. Um, the interactive experience of, of getting to play essentially a film like you do with some of these longer narrative-based games, um, it's, it's, it's a natural progression, I think, for them, especially with a successful series, to want to wanna, like transfer it to film. Um, and I'm sure it'll work, and I'm sure it'll be, you know, th- that it is just what it is. Um, you know, I'm in favor for anything that keeps extending the sort of like world that is the you know the, this this franchise that is Assassin's Creed. I mean, if it opens it's if it opens it up to a new audience, um, then cool. And you know, I'm not gonna lie; it's like it's kind of cool to think that that uh, they're they're re-releasing Ezio's trilogy um, and that uh, 
that it could be coming around at a time when they're going to be having this, you know, this this film being released, and so people are going to go, "What is this?" If they're if they're not familiar with what Assassin's Creed is, and they like the movie, and they want to go play the game, they might find themselves going from from Altair to Ezio again. Um, and and that that to and that to me is is really cool. It's it's an honor to be a part of a franchise like that, and to have it go into a, a large film with a, a widely known actor in the in the protagonist role is really cool. Um, mm. And and the worlds are so far removed. It's always funny when somebody asks me like, "So are you going to be in it? You better have a cameo." I'm like, "Why would you want?" You know, again, me with a buzz cut, you know, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I don't think that's going to fit in very well. And I don't think they, they the industry tends to look at what we do is so vastly different in, in terms of voiceover is not being acting, um, which is always kind of like, you know, we always simultaneously bristle and are amused by the question at a convention when a fan will say like, hey, you do a lot of like roles and. A lot of different gigs. You ever thought? I mean, thought about doing any real acting? <laughs> you know, like, what do you think we're doing behind the microphone? Um, but uh, you know, I, I think it's cool that they're going to take it. I mean, it it just sort of lends itself to it. I mean, it, hopefully that they. I, I think one of the, the the one of the challenges will be to to. I've always felt like so many of the locations are almost like one of the characters in just about every single Assassin's Creed game. Um, you know, when you think about it, the cities and, and, and just getting on the top of a church steeple and, and looking around and seeing this expansive city below you, it becomes like this this character within the game itself. And I'm wondering if the passive experience of film can capture that. Um, so I'm excited to see it and see what they do with it. Um, it, it really I mean, it really could. There's so many ways they could go with it. Um, I, you know, I, I, it'll, it'll be interesting to see what they've done with this as far as just the, the sort of passive experience of watching it as a film and to see if you have the same sort of connection to the protagonist the way you would when you are that person you know when everyone's trying to attack you it, it takes on a different sort of like uh, experience hence the interactive element and yeah. I wonder how it'll translate as you just sit and watch all this stuff happen to someone else that you're not in control of that'll be interesting I think it was funny watching the trailer and then I realized how ridiculous the concept of the animus is when it's said out loud by a real person Right. On screen. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, that's why I sit there and say, like, well, yes, you know, as I examine my, this blowhardy reaction to your question of, like, well, yes, as a thespian, I do tend to <laughs> always, uh, you know, the dramatic parts. And it's like, you know, and, and yet you're still talking about, at the end of the day, something where you press the B button to do stuff. <laughs> it's still yeah. a game. It's still a video game. Um, and it is, it, it is based in sort of some silly stuff where it's like, yeah, we're going to, like, plug you in. And you're going to go back into, like, you know, your ancestors' memories and stuff and, like, you know, like, fix history and whatnot. Mm. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it does sound completely absurd, but, I mean, who knows? I mean, there's there's a lot of things that we're doing now with cell phones that, you know, 50 years ago, if you would have told somebody that you, you could do half the stuff we do in our daily lives, people would look at you like you were insane or all that science fiction. <laughs> and we've made a lot about what was science fiction, you know, from... Uh, from way back in the day is absolutely a reality now you know yeah, absolutely that's what's so interesting about um Assassin's Creed coming out as a film I think is um is looking at that science fiction from a different angle for some reason in a game you don't you don't think about it it's just the animus is just the animus but it mm -hmm. was just it was just that one moment where um it was said out loud in on screen in front of me and it was like huh the animus is a bit strange really isn't it <laughs> yeah, I think the suspension of disbelief when it comes to gaming is such a because it already is is usually such a such a such a fantasy world and and because you know you're gonna get to I mean like you know like that's why like you know Mario Brothers as a movie you're just like what are you doing why are you doing that you know <laughs> it's like anything that you know it's it's like the, it always just seems kind of kind of difficult to kind of wrap your brain around from the passive experience but when you're like oh yeah no I'm gonna be this you know this talking blue hedgehog who's like the fastest thing alive and uh, yeah that makes perfectly good sense to me i'm gonna okay. go play that <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. i'm on board <laughs> got it got it and go uh whereas yeah. with a film it's kind of like you gotta ease your way into buying the world that's being created because again you're not you're not immersed in it you're you're passively watching it you're watching it from from the other side of the screen as opposed to being Ezio or being sonic uh, having to watch that is a little bit of a different challenge. So I, that's I I always I think it's fascinating to watch and, and see the way that they try to make that happen because you you do you have a finite amount of time if you're working for a film, you have a finite amount of time in order to to, to establish the world, 
establish how that world works, get the audience to come along with it, and then get the audience to also care about, you know, what's at stake, you know, like what's mm -hmm. at stake for the character and all that kind of stuff. And that's a harder job to do when it's a passive experience, like watching a film as opposed to, well, you're this guy and that, that character is running at you to try to kill you, so you need to defend yourself. It's like, that's a little, it's a little easier to kind of care about it at that point. It was, it was one of the brilliant things that, um, that The Last of Us did. Um, and basically, you start off as this little girl, and 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 you know, spoiler alert, you know, within a very brief period of time, you die. <laughs> yeah. It's like, and that's the start of the game. And it's like, I thought it was so gut wrenchingly perfect to be like, well, now guess what? We just we just sank our hooks into you, and you are hooked on this game now because you just you you can't believe like all this stuff happened that set it up how frightening it was, and then and then sure enough, you're you're killed. And it's like, wow, that's a that's a really interesting way to get people to 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 care and feel a connection to a. A character in a game and and film has a harder time doing that so it should be should be pretty interesting to see how they approach it with, uh, with the Assassin's Creed film. Talking of uh, film it just got announced today that Tim Miller the Deadpool director is mm -hmm. on is on board the Sonic the Hedgehog film. Oh how cool I didn't know that. Um, is that I, who was doing that? Uh, I believe he's in a producer role. Jeez Louise. Um, I know they've gotten, they've gotten like I've I've heard rumors of a couple different you know sort of heavy hitters that were involved in that thing and 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 if you you know that's that's again all that stuff is great for Sonic the Hedgehog as well I've had a, a bunch of people say like you better be in it or are they going to bring back Jaleel White or you know like we don't know what's going on and <laughs> I I'm I'm the last to find out about any of this stuff and of course I would jump at the chance to to be involved with that in any way shape or form but again that's one of those things where it's like this is a Sony project. And uh, and that's not necessarily Sega, um, and uh, and so that you know it's no different than the Assassin's Creed thing when people are like, "Are you gonna have a cameo?" I'm like, "Really?" And I'm like, they're gonna just reach out to me out of all the other actors that that have that have been in the uh, the series. It's like, no, it doesn't doesn't really work that way. So uh, it's funny when I when I when somebody reaches out to me on Twitter and says, "Did you hear about this such and such about the so the you know the Sonic film?" And I was like, "Nope, <laughs> didn't know, <laughs> didn't know." And I, I know nothing about it, and, and like I've said, I you know would jump at the chance to have a chance to uh, to even be considered uh, for providing the voice for Sonic. But I also don't know what they've got up their sleeve as to how they're going to approach this live action CG. As it's, I know everything that everybody else knows, which is whatever's been on the internet and saying like you know they greenlit a live action CG, you know, uh, project for Sonic the Hedgehog from Sony Pictures. So it's uh, it's going to be really interesting to see how they handle that. Yeah, I think there will be a lot of torches out there. Um, aching for you to get involved in some way I think it would be cool and I you know it's like I'm gonna do everything I can to kind of like you know uh, sit there and say there's, there's so much that we've tried to do with the, the Sonic Boom franchise um, just from a performance standpoint um, as to as to, to try to, to, to sort of re-energize the character and introduce it to a younger audience and get it a little more contemporary in delivery and writing style and all that and and so mm -hmm. I, I would love for a chance to kind of continue that um, with this live action uh, film, but I don't know. I don't know. Like I said, who's who's involved, who's in charge, and and how that works. And and all you can do is just maybe have your your representation reach out and say, hey, you know, we'd like to we'd like to have a chance to 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 introduce ourselves <laughs> to whoever might be working over there uh, and see where it goes. But but at the end of the day too, it's like these are these are not. Whenever you have a role, it, it would be the kind of thing where if something was to come out and it was to be another person providing. You know the character of Ezio. Um, we don't own these roles as actors. We get to to sort of rent them, um, right. if you will. And and the honor that it is just to have the gig, just to be a working actor, which is usually an oxymoron, but to be a working actor <laughs> is like it's just incredible. And so you know when when something happens, there will be a, a time when I'm no longer providing the voice of Sonic or or whatever it may be. You you name it. Um, every gig that I've ever had will come and go. And so uh, it, it's, you know, if something like that comes out, um, I look at it no different um, with Sonic than I would with Ezio, which is, uh, you know, look, if there's an Assassin's Creed movie and that furthers the the profile of a project for which you've been lucky enough to be a part, like Assassin's Creed or like Sonic the Hedgehog, then then that ain't bad because when, you know, when... When you get that person sitting next to you on the plane that says, you know, so what do you do? And if you if you don't mind talking about it, and you say, I provide voices for you know cartoons and video games and TV commercials and stuff like that, and they start asking, you know, oh, anything I would have heard of, you know, nine times yeah. out of ten, you're you're only as legitimate as anything they've heard they've heard of, because right. if, if they've never heard of any of the projects you've been a part of, the next question is, but what do you do to pay the bills? And uh, <laughs> 
And so, like, if they, you know, if Assassin's Creed comes out and is on TV screens everywhere with, you know, with a movie and people go see a movie that, that, that increases the profile of that entire franchise, and I've been a part of that. And so it's like, yeah, that's cool. And it, if that happens with the Sonic the Hedgehog movie, it's like, yeah, I'm the voice of, you know, Sonic the Hedgehog in cartoons and video games, and that ain't a bad thing. So it's, uh, it's pretty cool. Start the petition now, folks. Get a hashtag. Thank you. Going. Yes, please do. Please do. <laughs> it's but again, who knows what they're how they're gonna do it or what they've got up up their sleeve with this. It, it, I remember hearing about it and going, okay, interesting. I wonder how they're gonna do that. I mean, for all we know, it could come out and it's the retro Sonic who never said a word anyway. And there, you, <laughs> there you have it. You know, and that would be that would be perfect. <laughs> that would be perfect to to have that be the irony of of everything. After everybody was like, "Well, you better do it," or "You should be a part of it," or "I want to get the other actors back," or anything like that, it's like you just go. And then, of course, they decide like, "No, no, we're gonna go with the uh, retro Sonic. He doesn't even talk at all." Like, cool, perfect. <laughs> just the eight bit Sonic walking around this live action world. That Which be... I mean, I look at it and go, "Could be kind of funny." <laughs> yeah, I'd watch you that. Know, they, they kind of visited that with Pixels movie, so it's which I haven't seen, but but it could be that kind of a similar thing. So that's too funny. That don't see, don't see that movie, Roger. Okay, I, you know what? Yeah. If you ever, if you ever want any advice from me, this is my only time I'm ever going to give you advice. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't just don't. Just, I will heed that don't. advice. I will heed that advice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying I've I've not heard anybody say you gotta go see Pixels. It's amazing. Um, There's so many wonderful forms of entertainment nowadays, and you don't need to worry about that. Yeah, preach on. It's crazy how much like if ever there was a time to be alive, if you like like comic books and things like that, talk about right now. Oh, man. <laughs> There's it's no crazy. shortage of getting entertainment, that's for sure. My last question was going to be, uh, so what's coming up next? But you can't tell me anything, can you? I never can. No. You know, I mean, I've got it's like there's there's games that I've been working on, and I'll be honest too, that there's. Um, Excuse me. There's uh, games can be so taxing on the voice and can take so much time to do. In the last year or two, I've really not. I mean, other than um, I think the highest profile one that we had worked on was was really maybe some of the Lego games. Um, and then as far as like a protagonist in a standalone franchise, the 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 Dying Light games, which were as far as what I love about Dying Light is to me it, it's it's a pure video game from the standpoint of the gameplay is awesome, and that's yeah. It's fun from an acting standpoint to be a part of a narrative-based game that, that, that has quality performances and whatnot, but if the gameplay of the interactive medium sucks, then there's no point to it. I don't want to watch a long-form movie and press the B button every now and then in order to be, be a part of it. It's like I, I want the gameplay to be first and foremost awesome, and if the narrative is okay... I think if the gameplay is exceptional, everything kind of balances out. But if it's lopsided in either either direction, um, it can really kind of make for a crappy experience. Mm -hmm. um, and so, what, you know, when it comes to, to 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 a lot of like you know gaming work recently, I haven't really like put myself out in terms of auditioning for a lot of projects. We've been a little more selective with stuff, um, and the animation work started to really increase for me. And that 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 can kind of be difficult to do on a week when if you're going in and doing a video game where you've got to scream and yell and do stuff like that I can't very easily go in and do other work for other animated projects which also require maybe not as much screaming and yelling but a lot of like manipulation of your voice to create these little you know zany characters um and so we really haven't done too much of that so there there's you know I I, I can tease I mean obviously we've got Lego Dimensions coming out um they've announced a couple other uh, titles for Sonic the Hedgehog series uh, of games, um, as well as the season two of Sonic Boom is airing, I believe airing now, um, it just started airing, I think this past weekend. Um, and I've got, you know, some, some fun animated series work that's coming out. Um, if you give a mouse a cookie, which I'm really proud of, which is on, on Amazon, on their uh, Amazon video service. Um, and that's just, you know, based on uh, the, the children's book by Laura Numeroff and, um, it's going to be really neat to, to be a part of that. They've, they, we've got a, a series coming out as well as a Christmas special, and I've really enjoyed being a part of a lot of the family-friendly stuff, which was another nice thing about the Batman Unlimited series of, uh, of films because yeah. it was geared towards a young audience. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, so being a part of anything like that for kids I always think is really cool because at, at its core, all of us as adults who've grown up playing video games and whatnot, um, we were all introduced to things that we, we had you know an affection for at an early time in our life when, when the fantasy world was everything. I mean, little kids live in that world of, of fantasy. And um, and so to, to be a part of anything like that, especially with something as sweet as, you know, this uh, If You Give a Mouse a Cookie story, 
Um, uh, I'm, I'm exceptionally proud and, and have really enjoyed being a part of that. Um, so that's coming out, I think, in 2017 at some point. Uh, but we've got a Christmas special for that. I'm trying to think of any other uh, big, exciting stuff. Usually, you, I'm so bad at this. Like the the promo- <laughs> like when you were sitting there saying, like, "Oh yeah, you know the uh, Lego Dimension Sonic, you know, packs coming out uh, at the same time as the, uh, the the Ezio trilogy." He's like, "Oh really? <laughs> Good to know." <laughs> it's like I should know that. I should probably promote that. <laughs> I should probably tweet that out. Uh, it says on um, it says on IMDb um, the beacon of truth and honesty. Oh that, yes, um, that you're involved in the new 3D Sonic game that's due out next year. Can you confirm or deny that? Well, uh, I cannot confirm or deny that. <laughs> yeah, I figured. I <laughs> thought so. You know, it's uh, and even and that stuff is so ridiculous. How quickly and and you know, I there's so much misinformation that's out there. Um, I mean, I obviously like nine times out of ten too. Like, there's there's times where I've been told by people at, at different game companies, like, hey, man, you're in it. And then you find out, like, a year later, it's like, oh, I'm not in it, and someone else already was. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> and you go, well, there you, there you go. So I, I, I try not to, even when stuff like that, even when it's been announced and it looks good that they would, I don't know that, that they they might have some other idea for for the for the franchise. It, it, like I said, I don't own the character. I'm not owed anything. And... Um, and so, you know, there's 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 a lot more at stake than just me getting to portray any particular role. Um, and I always try to be mindful of that. There's a lot of people that work on these games, and there's a lot of decisions that go into, you know, um, whether or not they're going to take a certain character and, and you know, re-release or, or just abandon. Uh, you know, there, there's a lot of that that goes into it because they're trying to, you know, create, create something that, that gets people excited and, and gets them to go out and... And buy the game, buy the toys, and buy the buy the you know the merchandise and all that stuff, so that uh, so that you know everybody can kind of put some food on their plate. <laughs> and and it's a uh, it's a very complicated thing that is far greater than me getting to to say like, well, I want to be in the movie, <laughs> I want to be the voice of this character. That's not fair. It's like it doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. Well, Roger, thank you so much as ever for your thank you time. Um, you're a you're a true gent. And um, I appreciate your your time as ever, and uh, I'm sure we'll, we'll we'll meet again some sunny day. To be called a true gent by anybody with your accent is uh, is hi- the highest form of praise, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> so thank you. Oh well, yeah, pip pip and all that. <laughs> I like Cheerios too. That's what they say, right? I'm a dumb American. Uh, have fun at the election Cheerios? next week. <laughs> no, that's horrible. <laughs> uh, have fun with the election next week. Oh, 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 there's that British sort of like, you never know if they're being kind or insulting you at the same time. <laughs> In the South, that's known as bless your heart. <laughs> like, you, bless your heart. You went out in public like that. Look at you. You just don't even care, do you? Bless your heart. Oh, have fun with your election next week. Yes. Yeah, well, okay, okay uh, Mr. British guy. Enjoy your Brexit. All right. <laughs> have fun with your little Brexit, whatever the... Because, again, I'm American and don't know history or, or, or really understand anything global. But whatever that Brexit thing is, I know that it doesn't look good. So why don't you guys enjoy that. There. What is worse? Is it Brexit or is it the election? Who knows? Oy vey. Um, the world is falling apart. I, I, would say, I would say Brexit because it has far more global implications than, than this re- utterly ridiculous election that we're faced with. So... Uh, I, I think I think the Brexit situation has the ability to affect far more than just who we're going to have as president. I'm sure there's many people out there that oh, I just weighed in on something political, so I'm sure there's going to be a ton of people who are like oh, you. You don't understand. Like if Trump's elected, if if Hillary's elected, it's this this. But I I think Brexit has a little bit more of an impact globally than uh, than than who's going to be in the sort of puppet position of being the president of this United States. These United States. Yeah, it's it's a fascinating thing to watch from the uh, from from the outside, I guess. Isn't it though? Constantly I mean, amazing. It, it really is like bizarre. It's a bizarre time to be alive. We have more technological power in you know, in like I say, in our pockets with with phones now, and it's like it's an un- unbelievable what we're doing as far as science and astronomy, and uh, it's it's just it's in it's an insane time to be time to be alive, and then there's stuff like this. <laughs> you, just, you look at it and you go, wait a minute, we've come so far, but but we haven't, have we? We really haven't. We're still just as okay. Well, we had a good run, good run, humans, good run. <laughs> well done, everyone. 
Bravo. Yes, exactly. Well done, everyone. Jolly good show. Yes, exactly. <laughs> what should I say? Uh, Assassin's Creed, the Etsy collection is out on the 18th here in the UK, the 17th, I believe, in North America. Is that correct? Uh, I would. Let's see. Let's I'm see. Let's, uh, let me pretty double sure. check that. What are they saying? I'm actually on the internet as we speak. Speaking of what a wonderful time to be alive. Uh, not even showing a date on Ubisoft's website. What is this? I'm being, f- I'm, I'm being fact checked like a presidential nominee. I don't look at this. Like, you know, know, game info, media. No, it's just not. Uh, you'd think that it would say. It wants to know my date of birth. See if I'm old enough. Um, I'm not seeing it. This is, makes for a good podcast, doesn't it? <laughs> a nice long delay. Uh, let's see. Uh, the item will be released on November 15th, 2016, according oh, to Amazon. There you go. So it looks like uh, the 15th. 15th. And uh, we get it over here on a proper day that games should get released on a Friday. So that's very exciting. Oh, that's just, yeah, that, you know what? What is the, what, Why always Monday nights at midnight out here in the U.S.? It's like, I don't know. <laughs> like, people do work. I mean, sometimes. Most gamers, maybe not. But it's also my mom's birthday on the 15th. So, uh, yeah, well, that, you know, yeah. That, between, that, is a, that is a birthday present worth getting here, I think. There you go. It's going to be a good week between Lego Dimensions, you know, with Sonic and the Ezio trilogy, and my mom's, my mom's birthday. Not a bad, not a bad week. Yeah. Gentle reminder that if you are a fan of Roger K. Smith, the 18th of November is the day. Over here, we have got a smorgasbord of Roger K. Smith content coming. All You're in one be day. Lousy. Going to be lousy with me. <laughs> it's going to be fantastic, and we're going to build my little Lego Sonic. And uh, I love it. Very excited. Um, well, that's it. Thank you very much, Roger, as ever. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Ross. Okay. Thank you for having me on yet again. Uh, until next time. Likewise. Thanks, man. Likewise. Thanks, man. Likewise. Thanks, man.